glad to be here today with the executive director of the Illinois Association of School Boards, Dr. Tom Bertrand, the president of the Illinois Association of, of School Boards, Tom Neely, uh, state superintendent of education, Dr. Carmen Ayala, Illinois Community College Board Executive Director, Dr. Brian Durham, and Illinois Board of Higher Education Executive Director, Ginger Ostro. We are here today to talk about one of the most important aspects of the Restore Illinois plan, and that's the return of in-person learning in phase four of Restore Illinois. Over the last month, under our phase three community recovery order, Thousands of our small businesses in nearly every municipality around the state have opened their doors again safely. Kids across the state have been permitted to return to day camps, youth sports, and child care and summer school programs, giving them access to crucial summer enrichment and helping parents return to work. As we reopen aspects of our daily lives that coronavirus took away, it's important to emphasize that the virus has not gone away. It is still affecting and infecting people, some of whom are hospitalized and have severe complications. Important in our Restore Illinois plan has been our careful tracking of the data in each phase and following the science. It's our behavior that has made all the difference. As we have reopened business and leisure activities, Illinois has done better than almost every other highly populated state at reducing our positivity rates, hospitalizations, and intensive care bed use. And as a result, we've seen dramatic declines in COVID-19 deaths across our state. As of today, every region in the Restore Illinois plan is on track to begin phase four just three days from now on Friday. That's a true testament to the people of Illinois who have taken this pandemic seriously and practiced the doctor recommended mitigations such as maintaining six feet of physical distance, wearing a face covering when in public places and washing our hands regularly. These new habits we have all been learning over the last four months must be reinforced now and every day going forward. Without a vaccine, these will make all the difference between what will happen here in Illinois over the coming months and what we see happening right now in other parts of the nation that have reopened too quickly and without mitigations. The responsible decision making by most Illinoisans should give us all confidence as we move toward the new school year beginning in the fall. Classroom learning provides necessary opportunities for our students to learn, socialize, and grow. The benefits of in-person instruction can't be overstated. Today, ISBE, IBHE, and ICCB are issuing guidance that will serve as baseline public health requirements and expectations for the return of in-person learning this fall in P-12 schools and in higher education, including all public school districts, non-public schools, colleges, and universities. In close consultation with IDPH, infectious disease experts at the University of Illinois at Chicago, and other public health professionals, the guidance focuses on keeping students, teachers, and families healthy and safe. It recognizes that Illinois is a diverse state, and school districts and institutions of higher learning across Illinois will face unique challenges in how they'll operate within their communities. Based upon state guidance, each school district and each university will develop and implement a reopening plan that meets the needs of their community and the children that they serve. But on a large scale, these guidelines align with the broader requirements of phase four, including the wearing of masks or face coverings, a cap on 50 person gatherings in one space, the observance of social distancing wherever possible, and an increase in school-wide cleanings and disinfections, including symptom checks. It's important to note that this guidance is subject to adjustment pursuant to updated public health guidance and changing public health conditions. 
in the event of a dramatic reversal of local health metrics or a second wave of the virus at some point during the school year, schools and districts must also prepare for the potential need to return to remote instruction. I recently signed into law legislation to provide relief to schools and districts during public health emergencies, including the option to implement remote and blended remote learning days during disaster proclamations, which give local school districts additional flexibility. I have every faith that as we look ahead to the fall, our teachers, our professors, and our administrators will continue to do what they do best dedicating their days to ensuring every student in this state receives the education that they deserve. One of the most essential mitigations we have for keeping people safe during this pandemic are face coverings. I'm proud to announce today that the Illinois Emergency Management Agency plans to provide cloth masks to every student, teacher, and staff member in every public school district in Illinois over 2.5 million masks at no cost to the districts. In Illinois, a child's ability to afford or acquire a face covering should have no impact on whether they can go to school, and it won't. Additionally, to help school districts obtain the supplies that they need to reopen safely at an affordable price, ISBE and the Chief Procurement Office Bureau of Strategic Sourcing have secured several joint purchase agreements that K-12 districts can use to obtain safety supplies like hand sanitizer, cleaning supplies, and personal protective equipment at prices more competitive than purchasing on their own. Some are available now, and the team is working to expand the number of contracts over the coming weeks. In addition to offering support to our higher education ecosystem, the Federal CARES Act directed resources to our P-12 schools, over $510 million of which will go to school districts to address local needs in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. As of June 19th, 580 of our more than 800 local education agencies had applied for their funding share and 534 have already been approved. Dr. Ayala and I are encouraging all districts to use this funding to close the digital divide by providing devices and internet connectivity and are directing the majority of the remaining funding to purchasing laptops, tablets, virtual coaching for new teachers and internet connectivity to advance a vision of equity for our schools and keep our kids on track for success. In short, we are building on the same goals that we've pushed since the beginning of my administration, creating a pipeline of high quality learning from cradle to career. Throughout this spring, I was so impressed to see all the creative ways that superintendents and teachers adapted to the pandemic, a spirit of ingenuity that stretched up into our higher education institutions too. That work, that compassion, has never been more important than it is right now. This pandemic has heightened every inequality and injustice in our nation. And it is our educators who are on the front lines of seeing our young people through this moment and making sure that we build a better world on the other side. Now I'd like to turn it over to the leader at the forefront of our efforts to make Illinois the best state in the nation for P-12 education, our state superintendent of education, 